So, welcome everybody to lecture 12, Information Retrieval in the Winter Semester 2022-2023, second to last lecture. And uh, I will first say something about your experiences with the last exercise sheet, logistic regression, surprise, surprise. And then today we will start with a completely new topic, no more linear algebra. It's the last topic for which there will be an exercise sheet, and that's knowledge graphs and sparkle. So it's just uh, the beginning of a big topic, but I think it's pretty interesting, and you will see what it's about. And the exercise sheet will be, you probably know a little bit, or you should know a little bit about the database world, exercise sheet will be to implement, uh, translate queries from the knowledge graph world to the database world, and I will show you how it's done. But first about the last exercise sheet, here is what you said. It was an interesting lecture, it was too long, yes? You are absolutely right, and I'm sorry that was, uh, that lectures are usually too long, but this one was uh, way too long. Uh, also, because it's the second to last lecture with an exercise sheet, many people are now skipping the exercise sheets. You can, of course, do that, but <coughs> you have to know it for the exam, also the exercise sheet. So, sorry I could not make time for this sheet. Many of you wrote something like that. I like that out-of-focus parts were already implemented. We did that for all the exercise sheets, like the boring stuff, reading in things and so on. They were just given to you, which are a lot of work if you have to do them yourself. Somebody said uh, they heard logistic regression the fifth time already. Several of you said something like this, third time naive phase, fourth time logistic regression, but they never understood it really, and now they got it. Okay, take it as a compliment, or maybe it's just the fifth time. I feel like my linear algebra is not rusty anymore. <coughs> NumPy, still annoying. Epochs, yeah, that's true, it was only defined on the exercise sheet. The other hyperparameters were also defined on the slide, like batch slice and learning rate. We already made a note about that. <coughs> there was a problem with the a code template that it didn't satisfy the style requirements, but it was only one line, but still several of you remarked that. <coughs> Even the extended lecture time is overdrawn regularly. Yeah, that's true. The last lecture was too long, but also the other lectures are slightly longer than I announced in the beginning. And I will say something about this very important and complex topic in the last lecture and the next lecture, but not today. Somebody said that they grew up with somebody who is a close friend of Mr. Beast, and this close friend said that he was very antisocial. And when you research a bit about him, people indeed say that a lot. So he's very successful. He knows how to make very popular videos, but he's a terrible boss. So if you work with him, he doesn't listen. He tells you what to do, and if you don't do it his way, yeah, it's his way or the highway. So, uh, interesting, I mean, there are many such figures in history of science also, like Isaac Newton, he was also not the nicest of human beings, and it's a very interesting discussion of how to deal with such people. I mean, maybe they, they do something interesting, but they are just terrible people. Interesting trade-off. It's our brain inherently, so we are talking, we were uh, making our way to neural networks, starting with linear algebra. Now we landed at uh, log logistic regression, which is the simplest kind of, of neural network. The other stuff is basically the same, just more complicated. So are we inherently neural networks? A variety of opinions. Of course, a fascinating topic by itself. Yes, but I don't think it, our brain, uses gradient descent. Maybe it does. I mean, how does it optimize? How does it learn? It might, it is always our brain, might be a neural network, but not necessarily digitizable. That's true. So our brain, maybe it's very similar to something you could build with a machine, but you can't read out this, the state and copy it to some other device. I don't think there's more than what is physically measurable. I mean, there's always the idea, maybe there's something which is beyond physics, interesting debate. 
Too many things in the body are saved in multiple weird ways, right? It's not only in the brain, a lot of intelligence is also in our gut, bowels, everywhere, cells across the body, so somehow distributed intelligence and we only beginning to understand this. The brain is a lot more complex than a neural network. I believe that was also a very clever remark, I think. It's not just a neural network, but maybe that's just my brain trying to be special. Yes, we humans want to be special. I also added my opinion. It's very interesting. So I love history. I read a lot about that. If you look back in history, for basically any topic X in history, 100 years ago, a thousand years ago, for example, life, what is life, why are there things crawling around, moving. Before people understood it, for example, 200 years ago, no microscopes, you had no way to know about molecules or DNA or what happens at the microscopic or even smaller level. And when you are in that situation that you can't simply can't see deep enough or detailed enough, then humans always fill in the gap with mystical stories. So, so they always did that and I think it's only natural to assume that we are still doing that today. So today the topic is consciousness, for example. We don't know, we have no idea how it works, so, so we think it's something special. But in the past, whenever we thought that and at some point you could look closer, deeper, more detailed, and then you saw it, and then it was pretty simple and surprising. Which doesn't mean that it's boring, it's still fascinating how it works, right? How biology works at the molecular level, but it's pretty technical, so that's quite interesting. So, our topic for today, knowledge graph. So what's a knowledge graph? So these first seven slides, they're just yeah, it's a completely new topic. I will just show you some examples. So a knowledge graph, very similar to a database. So now we are going to a different world, but one which is still very connected to search. When you search, you can also search in a database. And here is an example. So that's an example of a knowledge graph. We will see on the next slide why graph. But in the simplest form, let me find my laser pointer here, that's just triples. So it's like very simple, the simplest form of sentence, a subject, a predicate and an object. And we are still in movie world here, like we did were for so many sheets. Nicole Kidman acted in Eyes Wide Shut. Who knows any of these two movies? Oh, wrong generation, okay, yeah, maybe I should update the movies, but they are very good movies, they are not so old actually. Eyes Wide Shut, as you can see, is a Stanley Kubrick movie, Burn After, no, yes, and Burn After Reading is by the Coen brothers again. I recommend watching them. Brad Pitt acted in Burn After Reading, so these are movie names. And, and let's look at the example a little more because we learn a few things about knowledge graphs here, even by this simple example. For what follows, it's very important that when you refer to this movie, Eyes Wide Shut, you always refer to it in the same way, otherwise you don't know that, for example, Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt acted in the same movie, if you call it slightly differently. So the names also here, when you want to express that an individual acted in a movie, you have to call it acted in, by exactly that way. So that's why it says unique identifiers, if you want to express this relation, always use this word. That's one thing. Then you can see things can occur on the subject side or on the object side. For example, Tom Cruise here occurs on the subject side of that he acted in this movie. Here's, he occurs on the object side of being married to someone else. Also, this is not complete, also important. Many more people play in these, act in these movies, but it's just a selection. We do have the directors here. We don't know whether it's complete. It doesn't say, it only says Nicole Kidman married to Tom Cruise, not the other way around. So maybe some things are missing. But basically, that's a, a knowledge graph in the form of triples. And I think it's pretty easy to understand what it is. And now you can imagine a lot more knowledge being in that form. Why is it called a graph? So to save some time, I've prepared this. This is the exact same information as a graph. 
So the things which occurred as subject or object, doesn't matter now, are now these things in blue. So we have this movie here, Burn After Reading. We have Eyes Wide Shut, another movie. Here we have the people. And here we have arrows indicating, note that it's a directed graph. If we go back, right, it's Nicole Kidman acted in that film and not the film acted in her. So it's a, it has a direction. This guy is the director of this movie. Here, married to, there could be an arrow in the other direction, but we don't have it. So very naturally, if you have these triples, you can also draw it as a graph. Yes, please. In the previous slide, um, there's an arrow, because uh, the, the, the last line is written as the two directors, but he directed eyes by shot. Oh, thank you for paying attention. I could say that I did it on purpose, but I didn't. You are so right. Did you know it or did you research it? Well, I mean, on the slide it says that both the Coen brothers and the Cube which are actually going to have to read. Yeah, and that's kind of unlikely, right? Copy-paste error. Thanks. You very much. Very attentive. So why is it now saying that it doesn't know how to write this? <coughs> Correct. He's the director of Eyes Wide Shut. Thank you. And uh, let's go on. So, what knowledge graphs, vielen Dank, Frank, are out there? And we will, I will talk a lot more about Wikidata in the next lecture. I will not talk too much about it now, otherwise it will be repetitive. Until 2018, so there are these, with this kind of information, people have amassed huge knowledge graphs, where you basically have all the information about the world. They are huge. We will see how huge in a second. Until 2018, the biggest one was Freebase. Nice word play, Freebase. Contains base like database, free, because it was free. And Freebase is also a drug, some form of crack cocaine. So nice, uh, typical computer scientist joke. This company was started by MetaWeb. Nobody knows this company, I think. Bought by Google already back in 2010 in a very smart move. It's now uh, what they started in this company is a major part of Google's infrastructure and data, and it was acquired for the, I mean, it's, a, it's nothing for Google, 99 million. Back then it was maybe, and, and they, I, I th it's a bit hard to find, but I think that was actually the sum they paid, another computer scientist joke. So this, but then it was discontinued. So Google absorbed it. It was open for a while, then it was not open. Uh, any longer, and then Wikidata overtook, which was a new Wikimedia project. Who knows Wikidata in the room here? Oh yeah, you should, because we had data sets from, from Wikidata. Yeah, we'll talk about more about Wikidata. In the and so Wikidata was small in the beginning and then grew significantly over time. So Freebase final size was three billion of these triples, which I showed you three slides ago, on 60 million things. Nicole Kidman is like an entity, and a triple is she acted in that movie. And Wikidata by now is 18 billion triples, so a lot has happened since then, and on 87 million things. So the number of things does not grow so much, but the information about these things. And this is done, it's like Wikipedia, it's uh, uh, crowdsourcing, you can go there, add some triples, correct some things. And what we did for you, we provide an extract from Wikidata, simplified. In reality, these knowledge graphs are pretty complex. We made it simple for you so that you can focus on the lecture. And let me maybe just, uh, it's linked on the wiki, but let me just uh, uh, show you how the data set looks like. Oh yeah, it's 23 data sets, Wikidata, TSV, yeah, that's what it looks like. So it starts randomly with something. So here we have Japan has diplomatic relations with Serbia. Okay, it starts with all the countries. Let's see whether that's just how it starts in some order. It's a pretty big file. You see a lot of triples here. Let's see. Ah, okay, there was something about the sun. Okay, the sun is, uh -huh, lots of information about the sun. Let's see, what else do we have here? Mm -hmm. 
Is that all the information about the sun we have? Child astronomical body? Ah, yeah, here are other. Mm -hmm. Okay, the sun is an instance of a jeep time main sequence star. Okay, sun notation, solar symbol, sun part of solar system, sun present in work, Star Trek. Okay, that's an interesting, it's the only triple, one of the few triples about the sun is that it's present in the Star Trek movies, that's interesting. You get the idea, this is a pretty big file, that's what you will work with in the exercise sheet, and let's just look how many lines it has, that's just a very, very small sample of the whole Wikidata, 38 million, so tiny bit of the 18 billion of Wikidata, but still pretty big, pretty interesting stuff in it. That's why we give to you for the exercise sheet. Also. In case you have problems, I don't know, uh, depends on the machine you're working on, it should work. We also have a smaller version of the data set. So if you really have problem, you should work with a big one, but if it doesn't, absolutely doesn't work, here's a smaller one with just 4.5 million triples. Okay, back to the slides. <coughs> this is just, you may wonder, how do I, can I really cast all information into this triple format. Here's slightly more complex information. For example, these guys, they married maybe on a particular day and the marriage, marriage ended. Yeah, it was actually pretty long for show business. They married in a particular place. So how, and this is like information connecting several entities. This person married this person at this time, at this place. And you can also write this as triples like this. So you can say Nicole Kidman married two, and now you have this intermediate object, which I called X, Y, Z here. You can give it any name, just has to be a unique name. And now you have, okay, X, Y, Z, I have the person here, the start time of the marriage, the end time, the place of the marriage. So by, you can think of it in the graph, if I go back to the graph, I could have here, instead of going directly to the other person, I go to an intermediate node, which is an information node, and now I can have all kind of information attached to that node. But that's just for your curiosity. You don't need it for the exercise sheet. So for the data set, it's, it's simple. It's just arrows connecting two real things. Now, of course, it's the information retrieval lecture, so we want to search this data, stuff, this data set. And the language of choice for this kind of the, uh, data is Sparkle. And Sparkle is a word play on SQL, so full of, uh, <laughs> full of computer science jokes here, because Sparkle is an acronym for Sparkle protocol. It's a recursive yeah, a self-containing acronym, Sparkle, Sparkle Protocol, and RDF query language. So this data model of casting everything into triples is called RDF, but it's not important for the lecture today, just if you wonder why it says RDF here. And it's also no coincidence that it contains SQL, the data language for, this query language for database, because it's very similar. And here's an example query, and we will see it live on a database in a few minutes. Let's say that's one of our running examples. We are in movie world, and we want people who are married, and they acted together in at least one movie. And here's how you would express that in Sparkle. So it looks similar. So how many of you know SQL? SQL, you should have heard at least of SQL, or somehow be... So, so what I have now, and maybe this, yeah, so you also write triples here. So if, don't bother too much about the semantics, but we, what you have here in the query, you write, you also write triples, but in some places you can write variables. So I'm looking for a person who acts in some film. I'm looking for another person, let me take the laser pointer, who acts in the same film doesn't say film one, film two here. So this is two persons who act in the same film and this person is married to that other person. So that's why SQL was invented. It's kind of very natural. You can almost read it. So it's like a high level programming language. And then you have to say, what do I want to see in the end? I want 
the two persons and the film they acted together in. And all here again, uh, yeah, in real sparkle things look a little bit more complicated, so we work with a simplified. But the simplification is not so. Actually, you have these uh, squared parentheses here. They are here on that slide, and we drop them here because we don't need that. Yeah. So, yeah, you can look at that. I will talk about it more in the next lecture also a little bit. For today, it's, it's very simple. You just have a... Also, let me go back to that set in real data. You, you usually don't have things which you can read here, but you will just have identifiers. It will say a Q80 here, and here it will have a number, and here will have al alphanumerical thing, and then you have to look up what they actually mean. So we have made it human readable for you, so that it's easier to work with. And now, you can also view a, a query as a graph. So again, we are, uh, and here's a picture, Again, we are interested in people who are married and who act in the same film. So you can also write that as a small graph, here you have it, where in some places, and this could also be the predicates, but here it's the nodes, you put variables. <coughs> so you can think of this as a pattern, that's how it's called in Sparkle World, or as a template, and now in your huge knowledge graph you are looking where does this pattern fit, where do I have a person and another person, there's an arrow from one to the other, and from both there's an acted in uh, to one film. And if we look at our <coughs> original graph, it would match here. <coughs> and you have to pay to the attention, pay attention to the direction of the arrow, depending on that, the one person will be person one, and the other will be person two. So that's the only place where this pattern would match in this uh, picture. Let's go back to this slide. And then the result, and we will see that in a second, is just every possible assignment of to these three variables will be a match, will be a row in my result. So one match here will be Nicole Kidman, Tom Cruise, and Eyes Wide Shut. That will be, but there could be more. And we will play around with this query and database in a second. <coughs> okay, that was just introduction and what we are dealing with today. Any question about this so far? And it won't get very complicated today. I wonder where these funny noise come from. But yeah, maybe aliens. So, databases. As I said, I mean, this looks related to databases, and actually you could uh, yeah, just store it in a database, which is exactly what we will do today. So we will just uh, store this in a database, no inverted index, but we will come back to the inverted index once again at the end of the lecture, and you will also do that for the exercise sheet. Now, in database world, the query language is SQL, <coughs> And I don't know how fluent your SQL is, but I will give you a crash course. So in case you missed everything in the database uh, lecture, uh, you will learn the most important stuff today, because in the basics are pretty simple. So what's a database? A database, for the purpose of this lecture, and it's pretty close to the truth, is just a collection of uh, tables. So here are two example tables. And one way, how do I cast a, a knowledge graph? Oh, it says knowledge base here. That's a, it's sometimes also called knowledge base, like actually they changed that because knowledge base sounds so boring, so they changed it to knowledge graph. It's somehow more exciting, but it's the same thing. So one way to cast this information into databases is for each predicate. So in our example, we had acted in, which person acts in which film, who is married to who, who directs which film, and a lot more. And you could have one table for each predicate. If you have one table, you have two columns, one for the subject, one for the object. So if, for example, for acted in, you have these here. For married to, I added some more. I paid attention to, to diversity, so we have um, 
men, uh, all combinations here, male, female, Nicole Kidman, Tom Cruise, Ellen, Portia de Rossi, so these are two uh, showbiz people. And I actually researched this with, uh, with uh, on the web uh, to find these queries, so actually Pythagoras was actually, it says here in the, but it's not that Pythagoras, so it's not the famous one. Apparently a lot of people in the old uh, Greece were called, maybe it was a name like John or Peter, or I don't know, so it's not the one with the triangles, or maybe, I don't know. So apparently they, m they married, I also didn't know that. That's one interesting thing about knowledge graphs, you always, you learn so much, because there's so much information in it. So I now learned that there was a guy named Pythagoras who married the famous emperor Nero. And there was even a public ceremony. Interesting. So, that's why this row is correct, although I was skeptical at first when I saw it in the data, but it's correct. So, here we just have two tables, and that's one way to cast this into database world. For the exercise sheet, you will do it slightly differently, we will see it later in the lecture, because it's not a given how you cast this into tables. You could also have one big table for everything. And if you go back to this, uh, what we had in the beginning, I mean, this is already a table, right? You just put table lines around this, and this is the column for a subject, this is the column for predicate, this is the column for object. That's uh, the simplest way to put it in a table, and actually that's what you will do for the exercise sheet. But for now, and I did this deliberately, I will work with this so that you have to think a bit about yourself. And it it's actually makes sense, both ways make sense. But we now work with this way. And for what I'm going to show now, we just have these two tables. We ignore all other predicates. Okay, so now SQL. And now we will do some live SQLing. And before we do that, let me skip these two slides. How do we work with a database? There's a very nice, who knows, SQLite, who has worked with SQLite. It's, I mean, there are these complicated databases, Oracle, and it takes uh, days to set it up. You have to run a server, you have to get the access rights right. It's, n it's no fun. SQLite is a super, super lightweight, that's why it's called SQLite, tool to work with database. You will see how super duper easy it is. <coughs> and it's really good to know. So if you don't have it on machine, that's how you can install it. <coughs> There are two types of commands, the SQL commands from the SQL language, and then there are SQLite commands. They start with a dot. You will see it in a second. <coughs> and you have two modes to start, just like this, SQLite 3, or everything you will do, like loading some data, putting it into table, write it into a file so that it persists, so that when you start the next time and you write the same line, it's already there. Otherwise, you have to restart every time. And let's just uh, do this together. And uh, yeah, here's some commands. This is just for your reference. Let's just uh, do this together. So. Let me show you, here I have some, I've prepared two files, which are, this is just who acted in which movie, it's somehow sorted by popularity, so Game of Thrones is first here, Jonathan Price acted in Game of Thrones. So this is our two table column in file form, and here we have uh, married to, Julius Caesar was married to, okay, three times, hmm. Let's see whether we find uh, this also. Oh, okay, that's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a slightly different data set apparently, but also not small. So this is our Mary two, and that's all we have for now. I have a, another one example, which is very small, to show something later. So now I do SQLite three. And I want to, whatever I do now, I want it to be stored in a file, and I call it acted in and married to, these two things, and I call it db, but I can call it anything I like. Now I'm in, uh, 
in SQLite world. So it's like Bash, it's I can also clear the screen here, I have a history of things, so it's like, uh, like in Bash, so it's very convenient. The first thing I want to do, I want to create a table. That was on the slides, but we don't have to look there. And I want to create a table for my predicate acted in, and SQL is also very much like Sparkle, you can basically read it. I want a table acted in, and the first column I want to call it person, and it's text, everything is text for us today. And the second thing is a film, and it's also text, and you have to end with a semicolon. And now I can ask, well, what tables do I have right now? Dot schema, that's a SQLite uh, command, and it tells me you have created this table, and it's currently empty. Now I can do arrow up, if I want to, I want another table, and I want to call it Mary2. I can name it any way I want, but I will name it in a meaningful way. And let me call the first column person1, and the second column person2. And let me create that table. If I do schema now, I have two tables now, and they are empty. Now I could do a first query, select everything from, show me all the rows from table one. There is some auto-completion here. If you type three letters, it's, it's nothing, it's empty, because I haven't done anything with the tables yet. Just created them. Now I need, so I want to read in a file, very important, you first have to say what the separator is, tab separated file, so I have to say otherwise I think the default is comma. How do you type, this is very important knowledge, how do you write a tabulator in, so if I do tab, I get tab completion, so on bash in Linux world it's always control V, it's written here like for paste, control V and then the tab. Now I get the character. Control V, then you can type some special character and you will actually get the character, not the function of the character. So now I told it when you read something in now or you write something, use tab as a separator. I import like this. Import name of the file, it was acted in TSV, import it into this table. No semicolon, because that's not a SQL command, that's a SQLite command. I'm telling SQLite import this. Takes a bit. And now also import the other table, married to TSV, and you will do something very similar for the exercise sheet into this table, file table. Okay. So my schema hasn't changed, but now I would expect that if I ask this now, I will yeah, now I get the contents of acted in. So now I could ask, give me only the person from acted in. It's only the, or give me only the films. Give me the films from acted in. Now I get all films, okay. Give me only 10 films from limit 10. Select film from acted in. You can pretty much read it, right? It's 10 films, okay. They are repeated, it's just the second column. Many people act in that film. I could also say, you don't need that for the exercise sheet. Give me 10 distinct films. You see they're somehow uh, ordered by popularity. Teletubbies. Pay. So you have other, many more commands. Of course, these are very rich, complex tools, but the basic stuff is super simple, as you just saw. I mean, I, I created a database, I can query it. That's very nice. Here's some more things. Indices, we will talk about this. Create an index. This is about performance. You can ask a query like this. We will see more complex queries in a second. You can delete a table or you can delete an index with or without warning if it's there. This is for your reference. You don't need much more. I don't think you need anything more for the exercise sheet. Uh, but of course you can look up in the documentation. Now let's go back to two example queries here. And the first example query, so now we have our two tables. Let's just, we are now just interested in acted in. And now let's say we want all actors from the film Burn After Reading. Well, that's, here's the query. It's a, let's just do it together. So I want something 
First thing, if you think about it, what table am I interested in? I'm interested in the acted in table. And what do I want? I want persons from that. I could also person comma film, then I would have a two column result. And now I want a condition where, I mean this table has two columns, person film, and the film should be burn. Now I have to know how to write it. I think it's capitalized in the data and I need a semicolon and now I should get I could also write person comma film. Now I would get a second column, the name of the film, repeated, I don't know how many times. I think I could also write the film twice here, then I would get it twice. I mean, it will just do what I tell it, right? So this is... Uh, so. Very simple SQL query, you see I loaded data into a database, I can query it, it's really, really easy. That's why it's called SQLite. Let's just copy the query. One thing I think that's useful to know, how do I quit with quit? It was a dot before it, otherwise, yeah. That's hard, also with a debugger in, in C++. Quitting program is sometimes the hardest part. Exit doesn't work, exit dot. Quit dot help doesn't, yeah. You see, can even control C doesn't work. Oh, now it works. Now I killed it. Okay. Now the question is okay, if I go back now, let, that's interesting. Now I killed it. If I go back now, do I have a corrupted database? You see, I still have my history here. Yes, I still have my data here. Let me exit properly with dot quit. And now, what I can also do, instead of starting it in interactive mode, I just specify SQLite 3, the database file, if I have used one, and now where is my... And now, the command here, uh, I see. Now I have to be a bit careful. I think I can also use... I'm not sure. Let me see whether I can use these quotes here. Yeah, it also works. So I can just specify my Sparkle command, uh, my SQL command as another argument and then I can run queries on the database with a single command line and even more com. I don't even have to go in the program. So SQLite, whenever you do database stuff and you don't need super deep complex stuff, consider using SQLite because it's so fun to use and also as we will see in a second has a very nice Python interface, very easy to use from within Python. You basically say import SQLite, you say open the database, then you can ask queries. So we, we already said that, you just select rows from a table with certain properties specified in the work clause, in the select clause you say what should I display, the result is always a table in database world, also in Sparkle, in RDF world, it's the same. Here's some more. Oh yes, please. On this slide you have underscores and in your um, SQL I think you use uh, white spaces. Is there a connection? Yeah, that's a very good question and Natalie and I discussed about this. So these are my examples. Actually here I have an even shorter one, which is basically some triples from my very first slide. And here I don't have the spaces, uh, I don't have underscores. I don't need them because my separator is a tab, so everything else is an OK character. We could have done it for the data set which we give you for the exercise sheet, but we didn't do it because then sometimes it's hard to see, is this a tab, is this a space? But the short answer is it doesn't matter, it's just you don't need them but just for you to help you distinguish, uh, we just didn't include spaces. We replaced all spaces by underscores. But it plays no role whatsoever. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, ex exactly. If I would do this now, it would be... Uh, I'm sorry, it wouldn't work. It's just a different string, right? Empty result. And also, and that's, by the way, I will talk about this more in the next lecture, that's a big problem when working with these knowledge graphs. Let's say I do it like this. I don't know that it's all capitalized. I also don't get anything. It's just exact string search. 
You can also do regular expression stuff, but then you have to write regular expressions and yeah, you have to write it exactly the way how it's in the database. But yeah, thanks for spotting that. But yeah, for but I think for the slides it's probably consistent, right? No, not quite. Here I have it like this. Maybe I just do it like this here. Yeah. So here's a slightly more complex query. So le let's now assume. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it that way. Let's now assume that we have everything in one big table. And now you have to pay attention. That's probably one of, it's not a very complex lecture, complicated lecture today here. It's one thing to understand about databases. And I will explain it slowly because maybe the most important single thing about databases. I deliberately have a very small thing here with just five, not even all the triples from my initial example. It's just some people who acted in two of these movies and not even all which I listed and Nicole Kidman is married to Tom Cruise. Just these triples and let me now read this in, in another database and show you something. So SQLite 3, example DB, which is empty now. I mean, I don't have anything here, right? So let me first create a table. It's now a table, let me call it all. And now this is a table with three columns now, and it's just a generic table. So the first column is subject. The second column I call predicate. Could contain any knowledge graph. And the third one is object. Okay, and I apparently did something wrong. What did I do wrong? All is a keyword. So, should have tried this before. All triples. Triples, should I call it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me just call it triples. So, on the slide, it's called all. So, I didn't know that all was a keyword. And now let's. Uh, we need the separator again because we want to read the data from above. And now import uh, example, the file example, the file comes first into triples. Okay, and now I have my one table. And if I do a select star from triples, I should get all my triples. Now I have them in the database. And now think about it yourself. I hope I, ah, okay, yeah, I didn't go there yet. No, I didn't go there yet. Don't look on the slides. Now I want on this simple database all two persons which are married. So there are only two persons married here and they act together in the same movie. And how do I get this? Let's maybe think about it for yourself first. Let's, how, how would we go about it? Select, we don't know what we select. We only have this table where, so now we have person, yeah, I certainly want to say predicate is equal to married to, oh no, it's, called, it's without the space here, predicate is married to, and, and person one, yeah, now what do I say, person one plays into, plays in some movie in which also the other person plays, right? So how do I, how do I do this? It's kind of, like this, I don't get any further if I just have the table one. There's now, how do I say end person one plays in same movie as person two? And now the one thing, and I will show it to you now, what I can do in databases, I can write multiple tables here. So I can have this table once and have this table here again as T2. And let me just do this. 
and there will be a slide about this, but let's first see what it does. So let's just, what I get now is the dot product of the two tables, uh, not the dot product, the cross product, sorry, the cross product. I get every row of this table combined with every row of this table. So it's the cross product of the table. So here I have row one combined with row one row one combined with row two, row one, so five times row one combined with every other row, five times row two combined with every, every other row, five times row three, so you have ten lines with Brad Pitt because I have him twice here combined, so it's all pairwise combinations, so 25 of them, and that's why it shows such a small one, so if I do a count here, that's also valid, SQL, I should get 25, and I do. And now, how does this help me? Because whenever you do something in database world, you have to specify on condition on a single line, and now you can see, if you look at a single line, here, let's look at the line which is interesting for us. Which, okay, let me ask that question. I, I'm claiming that one line here is interesting to answer our query. Which line is this? Which, if you start counting uh, as one, from one to 25, is there a single line which contains all the information we need to answer our query? people who are married and acted together in the same movie? Ah, no, I don't think so, right? We need... Uh, I think we need the table again, right? We need it one more time. Otherwise, I mean, this comes close here. Here it says Tom Cruise acted in Nicole Kidman married to, but I would also need the information that uh, Nicole Kidman also played in that movie. So I think I need the table a third time, but now, uh, yeah, how large is it now? Now it's uh, very large. So let me, uh, let me filter this table a little bit and let me maybe, okay, let me just do the following. Now I just want two lines from each table. Let me do it like this. T1 person, T1 film. No, no, it's not person. They are called ob subject and object now. Subject, T1 object, comma, T2, subject, comma, T2, object, comma, T3, uh, subject, comma, T3, object. Okay, this is now readable. How many lines do I have now? One, 25? Yeah, that's correct, it's 125. So, let's maybe not display all lines, let me display only some lines to make it a little more... Mm, or maybe I... Yeah, let me... By doing a WHERE clause, I can restrict, I can filter what I'm showing. So let me maybe just show lines where it's, where, which start with Nicole Kidman here. And there are other lines, but I claim the line we are interesting, interested in is among them. Okay. So now I've omitted the, I've just not printed out, I could have by doing T1 predicate here. So this is just Nicole Kidman. Ah, okay, married to Tom Cruise, Nicole Pittman played in I Wise Shut and played in Eyes Wide shut. So let's find the line which contains the information uh, where, ah, this is a good one, right? I think this line contains all the information we need to answer our query, because this 
this year is I didn't print out the Mary 2 to save some space. So this is from a line from table 1 saying that she is married to him. This is a line from table 2, which is a copy of the table saying that Tom Cruise played in that movie. And this is a line from table 3, which is again just a copy saying that Nicole Kidman played uh, in that movie. And you always have to, when you wonder how to construct such a query, you have to make copies of a query or a table or combine them such that the information you need is in a single line. And here it is. And now I just have to formulate the right condition so that I indeed get that line. And that's not too hard now. So now what do I want? I want Ah, and now I understand that I'm not doing, I'm, I'm sorry, I mixed something up because now my, yeah, here my query was a little bit, yeah, now I understand why I started with two tables. Actually here I was not talking about Mary 2, I was just talking about, uh, but it doesn't matter, it's, yeah. Here I just wanted all pairs of actors who acted in the same movie. Uh, I did two things at once now, I'm sorry, but it doesn't matter, so I did... Maybe we'll come back to the simpler example and first do the more finish the more complicated one. So now I have to say that... Let's say the first table is the one with the married two, so now I want T2... Oh, you can't read the last line, okay. Like this, it's better. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, because we're coming back to that query, I'm sorry for the confusion, let's go back to the slightly simpler query here, which I think it doesn't, everything is correct, which I said so far, but the query here is just all pairs of actors who acted in the same movie. And let me just show you what I showed. Let me just show the two copies. Now I just want all actors who acted in the same movie. So here, in where I have two copies of my movies and a, a cross product, I can just check every line. So I have an actor here who acted in some movie, an actor here who acted in some movie, and I just have to check whether it's the same movie, and if yes, I output that pair. So let me just do that. So what would be my where condition? And you tell me, so now I just want pairs of actors who acted in the same movie, and you tell me which conditions I should write here. And I can end them together. So I have, can have many conditions, right? Condition so, and condition so, and condition so. Any suggestions? You can also write it in the chat for the first condition. T1.object equals T2.object? Yeah, that's a very good idea. So I want that the objects, this one and this one, is the same. Exactly. And I can even try it out. So what do I get now? Now I get... Mm -hmm. Okay, t1.person is not, mm -hmm, that's also, is not equal t2.person. Oh, not equal. Hmm, my, s what? Oh, subject, yeah, not person. Hmm. Confused myself, okay. Yeah, act yeah act that's important, right? And we only have acted in here, but that's kind of a coincidence because our thing is so small here. I should also say that T1 dot predicate is acted in. It is already now, but that's only because I don't have any more. And T2 dot predicate is acted in, yeah, it will not, sh yeah, thank you for being more attentive than I am, yes, so now we have these, 
And now it, yeah. And now, okay, we, we are just, we are not interested in the movie, actually, we are just interested in the people, so we will just say T1 subject here and T2 subject here. Oh my. What did I do wrong? Oh my. Maybe we should switch. Okay, now we have, and let's again look at the original data set. Let me just do a select star from the original. <coughs> so, here we have only one triple, so we don't have a pair of distinct people who played in Bern after reading. So I really have uh, three actors in eyes wide shut, and I have all pairwise uh, combinations except the people themselves. So how many should I get? I should get um, 3 times 3 minus 3, right? There are nine combinations, three of them where the person occurs together with itself, so six. So I have all of them here. Yeah, sorry, we first went via the more complicated query, which we will come back to after the break, but this one is actually simpler. Is there any question about this? Because that's really... Yeah, you have to understand about databases that you have to copy the table here twice so that you can then express this condition here. Is there any question about this? Yes, please. That's a very good question. The question is how I showed it here. We first copied the table, like two copies of the table. Let me go back to this. Right, we had this here. Let me show it like this, these 25 rows, and then I filtered from them. And like I explained it, and also how I wrote the queries, it seems that this is also what the database engine SQLite does. It first creates this huge thing, which even for this very small example is large, and then filters it. And the last four slides of today's lecture are exactly about how it's really done. But the thing to understand it, conceptually it's done like this, but you can get the same result differently, and that's the last part of the lecture is about this. But to understand what it does in principle, you have to understand that it, in principle, if you define the semantics, it does this, but you can compute what you want more efficiently. Is there any other question? So I think this is what I have here on the slides is correct. So it's this, the cross product, and we will talk more about the cross product in a second. And also note, so I, I wasn't able to call it all because it was a reserved word. If you have copies here of the same table, you can just write as, and you can write the same table again and just give it a different name. So this was triples one and triples two. So this we already talked about, some SQLite commands, and now this is what you need for the exercise sheet, and this we do after the break, so five minutes of breaks. Thank you. So the exercise sheet will be to write a Python program where you can input the Sparkle query, and it gives you, it computes the corresponding SQL query and executes it on, on a database where you imported the data set, which I showed you initially. And let me show you how it's done in principle, and I will actually show you a lot, but you still, it's still some thinking, it's a nice, nice exercise. So, and in the following, we use, yeah, I will explain it to you for one table per predicate, and then for the exercise sheet, you will do it for one table for everything, so that you have some transfer to do, and it's not just copying what I explained here. <coughs> so, we assume, that's what I showed you earlier, these two tables acted in, Mary 2, we will work with those, we stored it in a file, so we don't have to do it again. So, ah yeah, here's an example, and let's do that, so, yeah, let's do that query together for that example, and then you get, I hope, the general idea. So, let me quit 
here and let me start again with this thing here. So this was how we started, two tables and let me again do the select star from, these were bigger tables than in my, my example. Yeah, this was the, ah, see now the separator is the original thing, it's just a pipe, fine too. Select star from acted in, select star from married to, these are my married to. Okay, and now this is my Sparkle query. The Sparkle query is, that's our running example query, people who acted together in the same film uh, and who are married to each other. And now the question is, how do I do it in SQL? So we have these two tables. And this is what I started earlier with a big table, but now we do it for real, but with these uh, two tables. And the question is, uh, let's, it's always good to start with the table. So I certainly need the, and let me start writing here. I mean, we certainly, yeah, we need each table. We need married to and acted in. How many copies do we need of which, if you think about it? Do you have an idea? One copy of each? Okay, let's try one copy of each. And... Uh, and then let's try to, f and, and it's good to think about it and see where it fails or does not fail. So let's do married, oh my, married two. And if I just want to use the table as is, I don't have to use the, okay, here write it with underscores again, fine. Married two and Ah, but I think I can give it a name if I want to. Let me call it M, comma, acted in as, and let me call that A. Jo I can just use it as a shorthand. I could use acted in. Okay, now what are the conditions? What's one condition? Let's just start with some conditions. And then... In the end, probably we want to select, yeah, we want uh, two people and the film they acted in. So that will be the same as in the Sparkle query. Suggestions. You can also write it in the chat. And it's not trivial, one has to think a little bit, but it's similar to the example which we saw earlier, just a little more complicated now. Maybe another acted in. Sure. I'm like chat GPT, I do what I'm being told, acted in as a two. Now we have another copy of, now we have married to, table is called M, we have, and now it's like cross product of three, right? Now we have uh, a line from married to, a line from acted in, and a line from acted in again. That's what we have in one line now, all combinations. Now you can do something on such a line. And how would that look like? don't have to say all the conditions at once, but we can add, add them one by one. What's one condition which we want? A1 dot? Okay, A1 dot film. Ah, oh, that's good. A2 dot film. Yes. So, same film, two, cop two rows, somebody acted in this film, somebody in this film. Okay, and now, and I guess we want more, so we can just, could be in the same line, new lines don't play any role for SQL, other conditions. A1 and A2, not, what's not? Not equal, okay. A1 dot, and I think we called it person, right? Person, 
not, let me just write it like this, it's not, it's a two person. Okay. What else? And? Ah, okay. A1 dot person, the person who acted in the first film is person one from the marriage relation. M dot person one. Mm -hmm. Or the other way around, yes. But let's, so now what else? And? And I mean the second person, I guess, should, I mean, of the second film, the person should be the second person. And it's a good observation, I mean, we could also have this and this, or the other way around. But let's maybe for now assume, if you looked in the data carefully, you would see that usually it's in both directions, but not always. But maybe to keep the query short, let's just assume that married to contains the information in both directions. Are we done? Yeah, a person won't be married to themselves. You never know, and these data sets contain all sorts of, but yeah, let's assume that. So you don't really need the second line, I agree. But if we don't have, are we complete or are we missing something? Well, maybe we are. And wh what should be in the select? So we want, in the Sparkle query, it just says the one person, the other person, and the film. Well, how do we write it? Mm -hmm. And actually we have a choice here, right? If we want the first person, we could write a one person or m person one. By the condition here, it's the same thing. So that's very typical. A one person, comma, and note this syntactical difference. In a SQL, you have a comma, in, in Sparkle you don't. It's really like this. A2 person, comma, and then the film. Which one do we take? It doesn't matter because they are the same. So let's just go with one. That's similar like you have it in programming sometimes. And now let's just uh, A1 dot film. And let's try then, and uh, maybe, yeah, this remark uh, not, yeah, this is uh, not really needed. Needed because usually a pair. person is uh, not married to itself, is not married to themselves. Yes, yes, that's true. That's a very good question. But by these two conditions, if married had don't, doesn't have this property, I will be guaranteed that they are different, right? Because here it says this person is person one, and this is person two from, from a triple here, and these can't be the same. So this follows from these two in a subtle way, but only if my table has this property. But let's see, we can check. Now let's uh, memorize this and let's try to do it here. So we do select something from, and we needed two copies of the acted in. It wasn't clear from the start, but if you try to do it with just married to acted in, you will see you are missing something. And there will be a slight 
which goes deeper into why did you need two copies. It, and it's very related to the exercise sheet. So we have married two. Let's just do it the same way as we did it on the slide. We have acted in one copy, and we called it A1. And we have acted in another copy, we called it A2. And uh, then we have where, and now we did uh, a1.film is equal to a2.film and a1.person is the first person of the married two and a2.person is M person two, and these uh, s things here after the dot are how we named our columns, right? And let's just see. And and now we want it. What did we want? We want uh, a one dot person comma a two dot person comma a one dot film, and we had a choice here how we. Yep. And now let's see what happens. It takes a while, but then it works. And they're actually quite uh, okay. Let's maybe <coughs> okay. And now let's maybe make use of what I showed earlier. Let's copy the query because actually it's copied now, I hope. Let's exit this and let's uh, execute the query from the command line. It's the same thing, but now I'm just in the shell in the bash console and I'm doing the same thing. It's loading the database, I'm, I'm getting that. Now I can uh, count how many lines I have. 6,992. Let's just see what happens if I add the conditions that the people are not the same. If Mary2 doesn't have person Mary2 themselves, then we should get the same number now. Let's just check and a1 person not equal a2 person same number who thinks it's the same number i don't know i think it's the same number but you never know with these databases ah it's the same number okay so we don't need it if it would be large enough in in wikidata 18 billion triples so if any kind of nonsense you can think of Okay, so it's this. Okay, and let's see whether we have, let's do less so we can search it. Let's see whether we find Nicole Kidman here. Yeah, we have Nicole Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman, for Stanley Kubrick. Okay, well eyes wide shut, they are here. Let's see whether we also find them in the other direction. No, only in this direction. Okay, so our Mary 2 is not... So, actually, I, I will not write it on the slides, but if you want to be more complete here, you also want to write uh, this and this, or the other way around. No, no, you don't need it, right? Because, I mean, it's not necessary that you get the same result again in, in that order. So it's actually, if it would be there also in the other direction, you would get all four rows again with the two first switch, which you may or may not want. So it's actually fine like uh, this. Yeah, as I said, we, we can actually look at the married two and we will probably see that for yeah, I don't know. Let's look at it. It's, it's also sorted somehow by... Sorry, Barack Obama is up here. Let's see. Yeah, so here it's in both directions, right? So for some, that's also typical. Sometimes it's symmetrical. Sometimes you have both of them there, sometimes not. It's of course not nice, but apparently for Nicole Kidman, we only had it in one direction. Otherwise, Yeah, okay, so <laughs> this marriage only in this direction, maybe there's a deeper meaning behind this direction which eludes me, but maybe, yeah. Okay, so that is that and it worked. 
And now, so that's what you should do for the exercise sheet. And it's actually very interesting because uh, you often read that in papers that you can translate between the two languages, but how do you actually do it? And is it a super complicated algorithm? It's tricky. You have to think about it, but then it's surprisingly simple when you have the result. So let's see how that works. And let's go back to the example in a second. No, maybe let's do it for the example. Let's, uh, if we ignore this triple, if you look at this and look at the Sparkle query, and now if you leave our thought process aside and just look at this syntactically, then you will see a few things. So here you have twice acted in, and that's no coincidence. You have two triplets with acted in, and you had two copies for acted in. And that's actually, if you think about it, that's, there's a reason. I mean, this is just like this. If you would have three copies here, uh, three triples here acted in, you would have three copies of that here. And now, look, here it says acted in that film, acted in the same film. It uses the same variable here, and because it uses the same variable here, that's exactly the reason for this triple here, a1.film equals to a2.film. So this triple, so it's kind of dual to this here. Here you have the same variable, saying that implicitly, and here you say, okay, this, this object and this object are the same. So the fact that this is the same variable is expressed by this equality. And you have that twice more in the query. Here you have person one and person one. The first copy of acted in subject is the same variable as the first, as the subject of married two. That's this condition here, right? And similarly, person two, person two, you have it. So the same variable being used twice here corresponds to an AND condition here. And this you can generalize if you think about it. That's what's uh, that's what's written here. Actually, if you what would you do if you have another yeah if you would have another acted in with film? Now you have three things, three copies of acted in, and you want to say the object is the same, and how do you express that three things are the same, that they are all equal? How many conditions do you need to say that three things are equal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, two, right? X, Y, Z, they are all equal. You can say X equal to Y and Y equal to Z. And if you have ten things, you need nine conditions. Yeah, this is actually what's written here on the on the slide. So if you, yeah, if a variable occurs m times, you need m minus one equalities. And it also makes sense for the border case if a variable just occurs once, you don't need any condition. So where you can check this out when you do the exercise. If you have a very simple Sparkle query where it's just one triple, each variable mentioned once, you don't need any and uh, where condition. It just works. So actually, it's, when you first look at it, it looks complicated. Here's the advice, I won't go into detail. It's, it's there for you to look at when you do the sheet. But if you understood the example, you can generalize it. And it's surprising how, how easy it is once you got it. And it also has advice here for how to implement it. So it's, it's not a lot of code, it's a really nice, tricky coding exercise. And now, we won't do this together, but just so you, you see it, that's how you do it in Python. And it's, that's really easy. So you do import SQLite 3, you have to Im install the pip with pip, the module. Then you say, use this database from this file. That's just database stuff. You always have a cursor, so you can't just execute directly on the database. You have a cursor into the database, and on that cursor you execute a SQL command. I think it's correct that you don't have the semicolon here. I mean, it's redundant. And now, yeah, and here one can actually understand why one has a cursor, because, look, you execute a result here, and maybe it has 10 million rows as a result. The result is always a table. 
Maybe you don't want 10. Maybe you want the 10 million rows, then you can iterate over them, but what you usually want to do, you how many are there, give me the first 10 or something like that. So the cursor kind of tells you, okay, I'm now in that result, what should I do? And here it's the code for, okay, actually give me everything, and then you can just do a for loop, but you could also iterate, which is very meaningful. Maybe you want to do some you want to do something for every line and then do something else and then you want to iterate it so one by one and not load the whole result at one at once <coughs> that's the reason one reason for the cursor okay but you will uh, see this if you have any problems there's the forum okay now the final part four slides about performance but before we go into that, and that connects to a question you asked earlier, any question about this part? Maybe let's also see the exercise sheet so that you can... Yeah, it basically says this again with an example. And it's the simplest form, sorry, of Sparkle, where it's just select some variables, some triples. Sparkle is way more complicated in reality, but it's just basic Sparkle. And then exercise two is uh, we give a query to you in natural language, all European YouTubers uh, and their birthplace and where they studied, if they studied, interesting query you have to figure out just by looking at you have to look at the data you have to see okay which predicates do I use how do I formulate it then you formulate a sparkle query feed it into your program you get the result and exercise three is just think about any query yourself one with many results uh, yeah then they are not in the list. We don't want YouTubers who didn't study here. Yeah. yeah, it's a very good question because Sparkle, like SQL, also has a construct which says, if this is not there, also show me the line with a null value or something like this. This is what in SQL inner and outer join is about. We will talk about joins in a second and in Sparkle there's the keyword optional which says I can actually, it's so simple, but it would just complicate the exercise sheet. So if you have a, sp here in this Sparkle query, for example, here I could put optional around this triple. And then if it's not there, I would still get a line in the result, but without this. Around everything I could put optional, but, but you don't need that for the exercise sheet. Okay, any other question about this part, Sparkle, SQL, and translation, before we talk about efficiency. And I'm very sorry that it looks like we're going to finish on time, but maybe something will crop up. Actually, I'm optimistic that it will. Okay, let's go to performance. So this, there was a very good question asked earlier. And before I go to the question, let me just repeat. If I do something like this, where I have uh, multiple tables here, which uh, all or some of them could be the same table, it doesn't matter, it's the cross product. Before I proceed, what's the number of elements in a cross product? So if uh, ti is a uh, number of rows in table i. Yeah? Number of rows to the power of k. Number of rows to the power of k. Yeah, that's good, but the tables don't have to be the same size. Yeah, so yeah in that case, each, each number of rows is multiplied. Each number of rows multiplied, yeah. It's called cross product for an, a cross product for a reason, because if you look at size, it's just a normal product, exactly. So it's just the product of the sizes, which means it's pretty big, right? If you have a lot of, and, and think about it for the exercise sheet, you get a table with 30 million rows 
And for most queries, you will need multiple copies, and you make a pro cross product of a table with 38 million rows, and then it's 38 million. And that's what you said, then it will be the same table, then it's 38 million to the K, and that's just very big. So, any engine that does something meaningful will not manifest this product, but it will do something more efficiently. And this is what I will show you now, and I will explain it to you by an example. Let me just draw an example. Let's see whether I get this right. Let me think. Let me see whether I... Yeah. So let's have two tables, and let, let this be abstract tables now. Let me just call them table X, maybe. And this is just... Yeah, let me just call, do it like this. So I have a column here, and here I have some other columns. Yeah, and here are some columns. Hmm, how do I... Columns, and here is column, yeah, one column. <coughs> mm. I don't know how to call this now, but let me just say in this last column here... Mm, okay, I want to make it a little... so this is uh, one column... and these are some other columns, one or more... some other columns... Oh no, this is wrong. Writing down here is hard, I'm sorry. Some other... Also columns is hard to write. And uh, I don't really care what's uh, in these other columns, but I will write something. Let's just say here I have A, then I have... Uh, I don't know, B... B and C. And let's these things have an order for a reason. And here I just have some yeah, X1, X2. That's some data. That's data over several columns. And I don't really care what it is. And I hope, if not, please ask. This could be several columns. Also, this column which I wrote here is one column. doesn't have to be the last column. But I just made it the last column for this example. And now, let's say I have another table Y here, and let me here make this uh, special column, the first column, and let me maybe have A here, and maybe no, maybe C, C, and D, and here I have some Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4. So again, this is... I uh, should write it again. That's again uh, one column here. And these are some other columns. And now... What I want, I want uh, to... I'm computing the cross product of the two tables. May maybe I should uh, write that here. Mm, maybe I should give this column a name. I don't know. How should I call this column? Maybe I should call it C. And maybe here I also call it... Well, I can have the same... <coughs> and, and what I want to compute, I want to do select star from and let's, yeah, let's call it x comma y, so I'm taking the cross product of the two tables where x uh, dot c is equal to y dot c. 
And now I want to compute, so I'm computing the cross product and then I'm only filtering out those lines where these two columns C, they don't have to be called the same, I just call them the same, are the same. Before I do this, how many rows does the result have? What do you think? How many rows does the result have? Now I want all combination of a row here and a row here, so that column C is the same. How many rows are there like this? Hmm? 2, 3, 5, 2.5, Euler's number. I should have. 4. 4. 6. Mm -hmm. Wow. Who, who has more? Let's do 4. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So the result. The result looks like this, and let's say, yeah, select star, maybe, yeah, let me, uh, in slight abuse of notation, write other here, this could be, of course, more. I mean, I can't write this, I can't give many columns a name other, but that's a slight abuse of notation. I will, and let's, let me may do it like uh, this. So I want to write x dot c, x dot other, and uh, y dot other. So I, yeah, and this, I should write it here, that's, uh, slight abuse of notation. You can't actually write this. If you have several, you would have to write out x dot name of this column and so on. Abuse of notation. So, and now actually let me do it algorithmically. So let's see how much I get. So here I will get a C, then I will get a X dot other, and then I will get Y dot other if I want them in that order. If I look at the first uh, rows from each, this with this, is that a match? Yeah, I think it's a match. So let's just write this one. And now let me not, so this would be an A here, and it would be x1 here, this could be several rows, and y1 here, that's how a joint works. And now, let me not do it the conceptual way, let me not actually look at all combinations and see for which ones this condition holds, but let me do it how it would be actually done. And what's written here, it says if these two are sorted, then we can just use list intersection from lecture 3. And that's actually true. I mean, here I have a sorted list. Let's assume it's sorted. And actually, if you create an index with a database, that's pretty much what it does. It will create a copy, not really a copy of the table, with that sorted by that column. Of course, it will not create a copy. It will have a sorted column here, and it will have references to this other data, because it might be very large. You don't want to copy it. But conceptually, you have something like this. You build an index. Now I have that table ordered by that column, and that table also ordered by that column. And now I can do zipper. And it's very nice that a zipper from inverted index comes into play again. So now I'm here and here. I start at the beginning, they are sorted, I check whether they are the same, they are the same, A, I output the result. I advance in both lists. So now I am here and here. They are not the same, so I advance in the list where I have the smaller one. That's how zipper works. So I am advancing here. B, uh, B, C is not a match, I am still advancing. And now I have C, 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 that's a match, right? And now you have something which we didn't do for zipper, but which it would be easy to extend. So now I output x4, y2, it's the combination of these two rows. And now if I have 
Here's another one, so that's also a match, right? So I also have this as a match. So I have C, again X4, and Y3. And that's it. Now I have exhausted here. Actually, would, if I would have three C's here and two C's here, I would get six rows. And that's what you get in database world. I would get three times two. I don't have it in this example. And it would be, so actually you need a mini nested for loop here if you have several here and several here. And then, so this is just uh, the pointers from zipper, right? This is uh, pointers from zipper. That was our simple linear intersection algorithm. And if you remember, the, the complexity, you always advance in one list, so it's linear. It's linear in the number of rows, right? You look at each row only once, with the exception if you have several here and several here, then you have to do something. But if this doesn't occur too often, which it usually doesn't, because if it does, then you would also have a huge result, then it's linear. And you can prove it's like linear in this plus this, the result size. So that's how you would actually do it. There are also other ways, and this is called a, a join. Let me also, yeah, this is called a join on column C. On this column, so I'm joining on this column. You can also join on multiple columns. It works the same. Then you just have take the uh, concatenation of the columns as the thing on which you join. Is there any questions about this? I mean, that's almost the last thing I will explain. And for the exercise sheet, now the question is how do I tell SQLite to do this? Do I have to tell it to use zipper or something? No, it's, it's more indirect in database world. It's already hidden here. You tell it, create an index on this column. And if you, it's, it was on an earlier slide, and if you create an index, and it will come in the situation where you have a condition which does something like this, then it will do a join and uh, it will be faster. And you can try it out for yourself when you play around with the data. Create indexes, don't create indexes, do the same operation. You will see a big runtime difference. Here's one more thing that's just interesting to know. I mean, there are multiple of these joins, which we do. If you have here, we just have one condition. Each condition is one join. If you have, uh, yeah, for example, our uh, the query which we had acted in married to all pairs of actors who played in the same movies. You can do it in two directions. Think about it. One way is, let me first look at all pairs of actors. That was our s SQL query number two, which I first messed up a little bit. Now I get all pairs of actors. All pairs of actors from the same film, that's pretty large. And now I go through each pair and check, are they married, are they married? Most of them will not be married. I could also go in another direction. I could first look at all married people. There are probably not so many couples, much less than these, and then for each married couple I check did they p in which films did they play. Most couples didn't, don't play in any films, and then check do these lists intersect. So I could go about this two ways, and then like first the one join, then the other join, or yeah. A and that's something for you to play around with. If you wonder this query, could I make it faster? And the question is, how do you influence join order? But that's just for your curiosity. It seems to me that SQLite just takes the join order as you write the query. That's, of course, the simplest way. I'm specifying this is our, uh, this is the query we came up with earlier with slightly different names here. Act 1, that's what we call A1 earlier. I have three conditions, three joins. And I think SQLite, if you don't do anything special, just executes them in that order. So if you change the order, you will get, can get very different running times. 
And of course, databases are complex beasts. You can tell them, please analyze this, try to figure out which join order. I mean, how do you figure out the best join order? One way is to try out all of them and then take the one which is the fastest, but then you have already tried out the slow one. So ways to do this is to do sampling, just do it a little bit and see, oh, this looks like it's going to take a long time. This looks like it's going to be faster and, and stuff like that. So that's, that's a lot of database theory about this. So you're welcome to play around with this when you do the sheet because you will execute queries and maybe you want to make them faster, but you don't have to. And I think that's it. Yeah, there's some references at the end. So I'm sorry that we've finished on time today. It won't happen again. But are there any questions? Yes, there's oh. some. <laughs> Yeah. And this is still not necessary. I think so we still would need um the book is sufficient to have each and so each time one time. So yeah, okay, we have the table three times, the big table. It's it's actually not that easy from what I explained, but what the engine will do, I mean one condition it will evaluate first. And this condition will just join two tables. So it will be in that situation. It will first evaluate the first condition, which will be a join of two copies of the table. So you have this picture here, where you have one column, and now you have the table sorted by that column, and this table is just the same table, also sorted by it. So it doesn't have to make the copy. It was, that's a self-join then. I mean, this could be the same table, right? And if you but it could be another column of the same table. I mean, we, we had such conditions. Maybe you want uh, object of my one table equals subject of my one table. Then you want like two copies, where one time it's sorted by the object, one time it's sorted by the subject. <coughs> A and that's what the engine will do internally. Then it will just go through the subject list in sorted order and the object list and find where it matches, find the equal ones. And from that, it will produce a new table. And now comes the next condition and now it will join the new table with, again, a copy of the table. But it will never manifest the, the cross products. It will always do something like this internally. Oh yeah, absolutely. A and this is this could be another example here. Yeah, this is actually an easier operation. Let's say I would have select just one copy where x dot c is equal to b. I have my whole table and I just want the rows where a uh, predicate is acted in. Then this would be maybe the, yeah? And now but again, if it's sorted, then I can quickly find the position where the acted in start. They are all together, and then I can just read them off. So that's actually, I didn't show that here. If I, just imagine this row here, this, uh, this having many rows, and I just want the Bs. Then I can quickly find where the B is. I could do that with a binary search, actually. I don't even have to go through it, and then the Bs will be all together in because I have a version of that table which is sorted by that column. So the conditions predicate is equal to something specific, they are even easier to evaluate. I just take the table sorted by that column and just find it, and they will be all together. But there's actually, I could give a whole course only about this. This is database optimization and or, or also Sparkle engine optimization. It's very interesting. Here, this is just giving you a glimpse. 
so that it's clear that it's not actually this cross product being manifested, but you can actually do it more efficiently. But it's, yeah. So I just gave you a glimpse, I didn't explain it in full detail. Any other question? So next time, last lecture, we will talk about the evaluation, about time management, about the exam. We will do some exam questions together and I will tell you how it is to do projects or thesis or other stuff at our chair. And I hope to see many of you there. So see you next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.